McMahon Stadium in Calgary is home to the surprise team of the CFL season. The Stampeders were expected to struggle, but here they are today with a chance to strengthen their hold on second place at the expense of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who have also surprised, but for the way they've struggled. Calgary versus Saskatchewan on the road to the Grey Cup on CBC Sports. CFL on CBC. As always, are Don and Ron. Scott, one of the reasons the Stampeders are a surprise this year, the steadily improving play of rookie quarterback Terrence Jones. Ron, he is becoming a bona fide pro quarterback. He sure is, and I think development is the key word with Larry Koharik. He has brought him along the way Larry wants it. That means allow him to play football as a college quarterback. Do a lot of running, do some throwing, but move the football and gain experience, and I think that's the key for him. And they hope he comes through with a big game this afternoon as they attempt to move closer to clinching second. Ten degrees is the temperature as the Stampeders and Saskatchewan Rough Riders prepare to get this game underway with Calgary kicking off. The wind shouldn't be a factor as it is very light out of the southwest. Dave Ewell is the referee in charge of this ball game. He and the other members of the officiating staff move into position as the Stampeders prepare to kick off. Mark McLaughlin with the kickoff assignment for Calgary. Brown and Vitell are back, and Brown takes it at the six-yard line. And Brown is stopped as he drives up to the 32. That's where Saskatchewan will scrimmage first and 10. Howard Fields was there to make the tackle after a 26-yard return. Well, Kent Osmond's got to get this offense going. Last week against BC, they had some chances to put points on the board, didn't do it. He's starting again, but he's going to need more than one touchdown performance from the offense today. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders in their last two games have not had a touchdown pass. Through the first half dozen games of the season, it looked as though the Rough Riders were going to rewrite some of the CFL passing records. This is Jeff Fairholm on the reverse, and Fairholm back in the lineup provides the Riders with a first down on their first play from scrimmage. But Fairholm gets up very slowly, and Fairholm was a question mark for this game because of a hamstring pull. And he is going off the field after carrying the ball in the first play. Well, we think Fairholm had to be a key today. If he's going to be here, they've got to use him with Elgard out of there. He's a big inside threat. Narcisse has been the only guy doing a job for him from the receiver spot. But they've got to get the backs involved, and especially Tim McRae, for them to have success. Got a three-back offense with Sean Daniels in there. They run the reverse this time to the other side with Donald Narcisse. And the Rough Riders opening with a little razzle-dazzle as Narcisse gets up across the 50-yard line for a pickup of about five yards. Doesn't hurt a bit. Keep them off balance. And show them one, come back and do it again. Their keys on defense the same as they've been most of the time. Doug Landry is their leader on defense. Junior Thurman has the unenviable job of shutting down Narcisse. And up front, Will Johnson. Good pass rushing in. They've got to get heat on Austin. Well, the Riders have run reverses on their first two plays. McCray from the backside, John Crossing. He was blitzing from his halfback position, and he was unhindered in taking a wide path to the quarterback. Well, he's got two sacks coming in. That's number three. When you bring that halfback, it's got to be a sight adjustment by the quarterback and the receiver to allow you to get rid of the ball because, as you said, Don, there's nobody there to block him. He didn't get rid of it quick enough. That forces the Rough Riders into a punting situation. Baker stands back at his own 27-yard line. His first punt last week against the BC Lions was blocked by Alondra Johnson. He came untouched right up the middle. Punt returned by Darcy Cop, stopped at the 50-yard line. Calgary Stampeders will have good field position for their first offensive series. A 14-yard run back by Cop after a short 32-yard kick by Baker. Well, it's going to be fun to watch Terrence Jones play today. You know, talking to Larry Kaharic before the game, he got options in, bootleg sprint outs. He said he wants Terrence Jones to play football the way he knows how, and that means run. And he'll be exciting to watch. First and 10 from just across the 50. 
Jones running the option. And he is stopped as he gets to the 52 of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, he said we're going to see a lot of that play today. He got three different options in for Terrence Jones to run. That one was the speed option. If he can get down the line of scrimmage and pitch that ball out to Lorenzo Graham, Graham's been their best running back this year. Larry Willis has to have a big game for them. Marshall Toner inside. The two of those guys got to carry the load because Jones isn't going to throw it that often, and when he does, he's got to hit him. Dressed for regular season action for the first time on the 22nd of August. Jones brings them out second and two. And they aren't going to get the first down. Uh, right here is a good example of what Coach Craig told us before the game, Don. It's how well we control the Saskatchewan front four and up on the line whether we win today. And right down there, second down and two, and I think they come up short. Dan Rashevich from his linebacking position came up to make the stop. However, the Calgary Stampeders are staying out there with their offensive unit. Well, they're not afraid to gamble. Alabani, the middle linebacker, taking all by squad. It's got to be big for them. Gary Lewis up front's got to have a big game, and I think they're going to test Albert Brown. There's the pitch to Lorenzo Graham, and I don't think he's going to get it. Richie Hall comes up with a big play for Saskatchewan. Lorenzo Graham rolled forward and put the ball at the 49-yard line, but they'll spot it short of the 50. The other side, they're going to be really happy with the player, Richie Hall. Fumble, and Calgary recovers. Kent Warnock pounces on that loose football. It may have been Bellavo who made the initial contact to pop it away. Although I don't believe the Saskatchewan back ever had it in his possession. Uh, he just mishandled it. It's a good handoff by Austin right into the stomach. That's where you put it. But you, you mentioned Bellavo and Warnock. And the Harry told scored the game how well they are playing. Ken Warnock's their leading sacker. Call him the warrior. But a, a fumble recovery to the third down gamble doesn't hurt him a bit. So despite losing the ball on downs, the Calgary Stampeders get it right back on the very next play. Lorenzo Graham isn't going to run anywhere. And this is something that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were concerned with, is stopping the running game of the Calgary Stampeders. That's right. That means that their defensive line has to beat the offensive line. That's who Harris' concern also. Right here, we saw James Curry come from the wide side of the field beat his man and make the tackle going away from him, and that's what Saskatchewan has to have. Lorenzo Graham picked up only about a half yard on that previous play. On second down, Terrence Jones throwing over the middle for Toner, incomplete. Ball was incomplete and everything, but Terrence Jones showed you something right here. He might be a rookie, he might be young, but he saw the safety blitz of Suter coming from the wide side of the field, yet he went right back in the pocket, planted, threw the ball on time. Threw it in a hurry, but he threw it on time. It just wasn't complete, went right through Toner's hands. Well, he came back into the San Peter lineup after suffering a torn thigh muscle during training camp, and Terrence Jones has come along very slowly, but has showing that he is capable of playing professional football. This is only his fourth game as a starter. Brown brought down at the 18-yard line with 9.54 remaining in a still scoreless opening quarter, a nine-yard run back after a 41-yard kick. Scott? Here on the Saskatchewan bench, the Riders' big playman, number 18, Jeff Fairholm, told me just before he took the field for the game that his left hamstring was a question mark, wasn't sure it could hold up. Indeed, in the first offensive play of the game, the injury was aggravated. Now he's in the wait-and-see mode, waiting for the pain to subside to see if he can go back in. He's not sure right now if he'll be able to. Well, that has been a big blow for Saskatchewan, the loss of Ray Algard and Jeff Fairholm. Algard out for the season with the injury he suffered last week in that loss to the BC Lions and Fairholm absent from last week's game because of that hamstring injury coming back this week even though he was not 100% and now Milson Jones is Jones is up and uh, hobbling off to the sideline Sean Daniels comes in in his spot Ted Austin's pass is complete to James Ellingson, this will be very close to a first down. 
He was driven back from around the 29-yard line, and that's the area the Riders had to penetrate to move the yardstick, and the official signal that it is a Saskatchewan first down. Good pattern by Ellingston. All he wants to do, he knows the situation. Second down, short yardage. Get across that first and 10 marker, make the catch. That way, if you force it back, you can make what you want, and that was three yards. Austin with time, and he has got Sean Daniels wide open, and that will be close to another first down up to the 40-yard line. Uh, Sean Daniels, they list him at 5'11", 238 pounds. Talking to Gregory last week, he's probably a little heavier than that, up over 240. But he does a good job. He's made a good block today, and now he shows he can catch the football. He'll be swinging to the flat from the left side of the screen. When Austin turns, he'll find him by himself. He gets turned upfield. Good tackle by McCrary, but he picks up the first down. Pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think it was Mitchell Price who got a hand up in front of that Kent Austin throw. Good job. When that quarterback takes that quick step, that three-step drop and stop, you're not going to sack him. So Mitchell Price has been around long enough to know that if you're not going to get there, at least get your hands up. In that case, he batted it down. The 6'3", 270-pound product of Livingston University. A number of fine players have come out of that school into the Canadian Football League. Second and 10, Saskatchewan. They are at their own 40-yard line. It's still scoreless in this opening quarter. Austin with time. He completes the pass, and that will be close to a first down. In fact, it should be a first down with James Ellingson on the receiving end of the throw. You saw Austin look to his left. He found the man who was single-covered, Howard Fields. And Ellingson one-on-one. -on -one. Ellingson ran his pattern deep and then came back to the quarterback. Not much defense back can do about it. This has been a pretty good drive that Kent Austin has put together, taking the Riders from their own 18-yard line up to the 51. And it's first and 10, the draw play. This time it isn't going to work. Tim McRae has stopped right in his tracks. He'll actually lose a yard. We talked about the speed of Johnson when we were talking about their defensive keys a minute ago. They ran a draw up the middle, yet from the wide side of the field, from defensive end, Will Johnson came around the play and made the tackle from the back. For, and lost about a half a yard with that's good speed. Larry Koharik feels he's more effective at a rush end position than he was when he played in the NFL as a linebacker. Tim McRae struggling for a first down. He's going to be about a yard, maybe two short, as he got to the 51 of the Calgary Stampeders. Looking to his left, looking around. McCray leaks out, comes back underneath. There he is, standing right in front of you, catches the football. Now it's just a matter of can he get the first down. Good pursuit, good hustle. That's the trademark at Calgary. Swarm to the football. Get a lot of red jerseys in on the tackle. Saw a good example of it there, about five of them. Tim McCray has been the second leading receiver for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this year and is their number one rusher. Some confusion on the part of the Rough Riders. I don't know what they're doing. They've got a short yardage team in there. Well, they're not going to get this play underway, no, they're one are they? short. They're one short anyway. They're going to run it nonetheless. Yeah. They're going to be stopped. I don't know why they didn't take the no yards penalty there. They were one player short. Yeah. All sorts of confusion as to who should be on the field. And they turn the ball over on down. 12 remaining in the opening quarter. And the Calgary Stampeders get the ball at their own 51-yard line, stopping the Riders on third and two with a lot of confusion in that Rough Rider backfield prior to the ball being snapped. Terrence Jones with time over the middle for Toner. What a nice play by Terrence Jones. Well thrown. Pushed out of bounds by Glenn Suter after a 55-yard gain. Over the middle for Marshall Toner. And then Toner runs to the sidelines as he is tracked down by Glenn Suter and forced out of bounds, but not before he got to the four. So Marshall Toner atones for an earlier miscue when they gambled on third down and he was unable to make his block lorenzo graham mishandled that pitch from terrence jones but still fought his way to the two-yard line well they like the runners just tossed the ball out to graham ball was there he just took his eyes off of it hit him on the knees lucky to get it back 
the big thing he does in there down inside the three. So it will be second and goal for the Stampeders with 5-14 remaining in this opening quarter. Brock Smith and Willis go wide left. Hand off to Tim Petras. And is he there? No signal from the officials. Jones thought he had made it, but apparently he was stopped just short of the goal line by Glenn Suter, the safety. So it will be third and goal from the one-yard line. Well, they put it back to the one-yard line. Petras thought he was in. Jones thought he was in. Just a lead. They took a long time getting it off. Let's see where he ends up. I think it's a good call by the official. He's sure he put the ball over later, but not when he hit the ground. Third down gamble. Jones carries. Still no signal. Now they indicate a touchdown. 6'2", 210 pounds. He should get in there, and he did it right. We'll get a replay of that, and you'll see how he runs his quarterback. And he got down real low, used his strength and his power, and just goes right in behind his right guard, Tom Spalatini. Terrence Jones on the third down. Gamble had to struggle, but he made it to the end zone. And the Calgary Stampeders lead by a score of 6-0 with Mark McLaughlin preparing for the point after. What you trying to give me, man? Yeah, well, he first he's going flow, 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 down, ram trap. So I said, ram trap without giving me quick. That was a good call, though. Good job. Good job. That's all right. Good job. Listen. On your top. It's handled on the snap from center into the end zone, and it's incomplete. And Brent Maddox probably did a good thing there in throwing it over the arms of any Saskatchewan defender because it is still a live ball. Well, with a bad snap on the convert attempt, the Calgary Stampeders kick off holding a 6-0 lead. The same thing happened in the first game of the season against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Stampeders missed their conversion attempt on their first touchdown of the year. Patel on the kickoff return is stopped at the 32-yard line. 417 remaining in the opening quarter. That was a 22-yard run back. And Terrence Jones got that 59-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown run. Watch Terrence Jones get down real low. Gets down, gets in behind Spalatini, just gets those legs pushing forward. Gets it across the plane of the goal line. It's all the further he had to get. First and 10, Saskatchewan. They are at the 32-yard line. Austin dumping it off to Tim McRae. And the penetration there by the linebacker, Ken Ford, coming up to make the tackle with help from Johnson. So we saw Johnson from one end in on the tackle. We saw Ken Warnock come all the way across the field. That's what Kohari told us. When, they, when that ball's in the air, he said that defense goes to it. Well, I'll tell you, you get a bunch of team pride when everybody gets in and gets one hit on that guy. They love it. A swarming defense, and it has proven successful and effective for the Calgary Stampeder. The pass complete to Narcisse, and he should have a first down. That's good, good job by Austin. Narcisse wasn't his primary receiver. He's looking left, looking left, and all of a sudden, Narcisse took it deep enough and come down. Watch Austin. He's got the underneath man coming from the right side. He's looking, looking, doesn't have it. Turns around, Narcisse comes back to the quarterback, gets good separation, picks up the first down. Brought down by Junior Thurman, but not before he had penetrated the 44-yard line. Wilson Jones is obviously okay back in the ball game after having his right ankle retaped, and he gets about eight yards battling up to the 53-yard line. Wow, well, when you're going to run the football, that middle linebacker's got to be around the ball, and this is what Landry does best. You see him sliding around, trying to get there, and he does. The only thing he'd like to do is get there quicker because Saskatchewan got eight yards out of it. That's a good job of blocking. Landry has been selected the defensive player of the game by the coaching staff in four of the games that the Calgary Stampeders have played this season. This is Sean Daniels, and Daniels was met head-on by Doug Landry, and he had to fight for those two yards that should give the Rough Riders a first down. Run a counter play, second down. When you see the quarterback wheel out of there on a reverse like that and make a fake handoff underneath as he did there to Sean Daniels, 
takes a little bit longer. Daniels paid the price. Watch it. Here's the fake. A little bit of turn. Turn, hand off underneath, follow all that good hit up front. And he had the lunge to get the first down, but he got it far enough. First and ten for the Rough Riders. They are at midfield with 158 remaining in the first quarter. Sean Daniels, the ball carrier. Daniels is a hard runner, and it was Matt Finlay who came across to help Ken Ford bring him down. We mentioned earlier that he's from Bowling Green, and at 240 pounds, he has built something like a bowling ball. Yeah, the way he runs, he gets turned up field. He's a, he's a load for anybody to bring down. I, know I remember last week, Don, we talked to Coach Gregory about when he was going to get to play some running back, and he said he just wasn't sure of the offense yet, but looks like he's picked it up now. He's been there a couple weeks, and he's running well right now. And with Fairholm out of the lineup, they are using that three-back offense. And this is one of the other running backs, Milton Jones, getting the first down inside the 45-yard line. You know, you talk so often about the run setting up the passing attack in the Canadian Football League, but the Rough Riders were definitely intent upon establishing the ground game this afternoon against Calgary. And I think it comes back to what you just mentioned with Elgar out, Fairholm out of there. That's a big part of their pass offense out of there. So they want to get that football, control it on the ground. The time runs, you move ball down the field, score touchdown. First and ten from the 44-yard line. Austin throwing deep. Incomplete. Mark Dye was the intended receiver. Good coverage by Ron Hopkins and then Greg Peterson coming over from the safety position. He goes up to make the hit. He's going to sprint out out of that full house back. The guy just going to the post, going deep. Hopkins is caught behind him a step, but coming from the other side, a little bit too far, but Greg Peterson's there to make the hit. Coach John Gregory had some interesting comments about Guy. He was out of the lineup last week, replaced by Gene Taylor. He said, but despite the fact he was dropped from the lineup, he worked harder in practice than any of the other players trying to win his spot back. Well, no one wants to be out of that lineup very long. And the type of athlete that you want is the one that will work to get his job back. This is what that they had to do today. Get the ball in the hands of McCray and Milson Jones coming out of there. That's what they did here. And they're going to be close enough to see what goes on here. The pass over the middle to Tim McRae. That will be a gain of eight yards. John Gregory again sends in his short yardage offense. And they have to get this ball snapped rather quickly. Only four seconds remain on that 20-second clock. They get it away just in time. And Milton Jones gets the first down on what should be the final play of the opening quarter. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be first and ten when we return to start quarter two. Six nothing, the Calgary Stampeders leading on a Terrence Jones touchdown. And to start the second quarter, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are first and ten from the Calgary 33-yard line. Drop play with Milton Jones. Doug Landry is back in the ball game, and he makes the tackle. They limit his gain to about a yard. The Saskatchewan Upriders have moved the ball well through the first quarter, but one big play. A long 55-yard pass from Terrence Jones to Marshall Toner set up the only scoring points of the game, a touchdown by Terrence Jones. Second and nine, swing pass to Milton Jones coming out of the backfield. He is going to be perhaps two yards short on the first down. Two yards short. It's funny what Saskatchewan's doing right now. They got Bob Bresciani out of the ball game, so they're going with two wide receivers, Guy and Narcisse, Ellingson in the slot, and three running backs in that T formation. That time they sent Jones and uh, Daniels out and crossed them and hit Jones in the flat, but they're going to be a little bit short. Well, John Gregory, because of the uncertainty all week about the availability of Fairholm, introduced this offense into the Rough Riders scheme for this game, and they've been using it ever since the first play. Field goal attempt by Ridgeway is good, and the Rough Riders, with 13-41 remaining in the half, are on the board. It's 6-3, Calgary in front of Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan trying to stay within striking distance of Calgary in the battle for second place in the West and break out of that 
tie for third place with the BC Lions. I'm sure that loss last week to BC had a demoralizing effect on the Rough Riders. Oh, I'm sure it did, Don. I mean, I would say it'd be like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four, you're going to really <laughs> fight your way out of it. I mean, to have a game won and lose it with no time on the clock, that's very demoralizing to a football club. Three plays with no time on the clock, resulting in a BC touchdown in a game that Saskatchewan appeared to have won. Jones throwing deep for Larry Willis. This is intercepted by the safety, Glenn Suter. And Suter is brought down at the 48-yard line. Tom Spalatini is there to make the tackle. The Rough Riders will be first and 10 when we return. Well, Glenn Suter was the target of considerable criticism last week because it was his pass interference that resulted in BC being able to score the touchdown. But he has, I guess, in the minds of some, redeemed himself somewhat this afternoon with the interception of this Terrence Jones throw intended for Gary Willis. Another Jones, Milson Jones of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, is unable to hold on to that Ken Austin pass. The fans at McMahon Stadium, a crowd of around 30,000, and Larry Kuharik felt that Jones had possession, but that was not the case. Uh, let's watch the hit. Dave McCrary arrives. Ball pops loose. Referee ruled he did not have possession. I think I have to agree with him. He did not have it all the way in. To his hands. That's a good call. Second and ten. The ball is at the 48-yard line. Tim McRae will be stopped about five yards short of a first down, so the Rough Riders will be forced to kick it away with 12:32 remaining in the first half. Rough Riders have to be concerned with the way defensive tackle James Curry came off the field. Last week, he was shaken up a couple of times in that loss to the BC Lions. And he kept checking on, they checked out his leg last week a little bit, but he kept coming back in and playing. But the way he went out this time, it, it didn't look like he's going to be back for a while. He may come back. He's pretty tough, but I don't know if he'll be back this series. Pop and Kennard Martin back for this punt return. It's Kennard Martin who is the designated import running the ball back to the 23-yard line. A new addition to the Calgary Stampeders, and he returns at 17 yards in at defensive tackle in place of the injured James Curry as Calgary scrimmages first and ten. Bobby Jurison stops Tim Petrus after a pickup of about three yards. Petrus is having quite a season in the CFL. Boy, he really is. He's, he's averaging about almost five yards a carry. Seems like every year he goes to training camp, he has to fight for his position. And yet at the end of the season when the statistics final stats come out, he's like in the top six or seven in rushing. But he's having a good career, six years in the league now at the University of Calgary. Second down, Jones couldn't find a receiver and attempted to run that quarterback draw, but Bobby Jurison stayed at home and made the tackle. Seems funny when we just talked about, you know, what Jones was trying to do. He's run a speed option, a, a load option. This time it's the quarterback draw. So we will see all those plays. We've seen them all in a hurry. This time he wasn't able to get any further than three or four yards, so they got a punt. Albert Brown is the lone back awaiting this third down kick by Brent Maddich. Maddich will be featured this afternoon at halftime. Brown grabs it at the 45-yard line. He had some thoughts about reversing his field, but Dan Wicklum prevented him from doing that, and then he's forced out of bounds. Directly in front of the Rough Rider bench with 10.55 remaining in the first half. Calgary leading by a score of 6-3. Pretty good statistics, but not putting the ball in the end zone. You know, the Ridgeway's kicking a lot of field goals, but that's okay. It takes two field goals for every touchdown, so this offense has got to get on track and start putting it into the end zone. Now you have to go back three games to the last time that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders completed the touchdown pass. Tim McRae can't get outside. Flint Fleming is there to bring him down. Tim McRae, from his halfback position, had moved up. And he forced McRae and Fleming finished the job. Good job. Watch. Misdirection. A little fake to Jones. Hand off to McRae going backside. But watch number 90. Good job. Bites off the block. Steps over the guy. Makes the tackle. They lose three yards. Good job from Fleming. 
Saskatchewan. A loss of three. It is second and 13 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Nelson Jones taking it out of the backfield. Stopped short of a first down. Asking too much. Second down, 13 yards to go for a first and 10. They're going to let you dump that ball off to a guy like Nelson Jones or Tim McRae all day long because they feel he cannot get 13 yards running from four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Early in the ball game, the Rough Riders were able to put together a couple of good drives, but on their last two offensive series, they have been stopped. Kopp and Martin are back for this third down kick by Terry Baker. 9.43 remains in the first half. 6-3, the Stampeders lead the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Good kick by Baker. Martin retreats to the end zone, and Kopp yelling to him to go down, and he concedes the single point. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. Those knees can only take so much of a pounding, and uh, there are many veteran players who have trouble the day after a game even getting out of bed. Yeah, especially when you've had surgery on them. It takes longer and longer to get that thing healthy once you start aggravating it. And the way the Calgary Stampeders like to play football, they'll put a lot of pressure on the defensive line because they want to run, they run some traps. That's tough on the line. Second and six for Calgary. Jones gets away from Lewis, dumps it off to Lorenzo Graham, and even though he was somersaulted at the 45, he should be close to the first down. We saw the athletic ability of Terrence Jones again. He looked downfield. Watch him. He's going to get some pressure up the middle, not able to throw the football. The pressure's going to come, and he'll outrun it. He gets outside, finds him, dumps it to him, and a good hit. Harry Skipper dumps him, but he's going to be close enough for the first down. That's all he cared about. First and 10 for the Calgary Stampeders from their own 45-yard line. They lead by a score of 6-4. This is Lorenzo Graham again. And Graham did a good job of fighting for 8-4. Well, was a good job pulling that time. Lloyd Fairbanks, the left tackle. Take a look at Gary Lewis, number 79. Here comes the block, 65. Palumbo tries to make it. He escapes, goes right down that line of scrimmage, and jumps on his back. When Lloyd Fairbanks pulls to go, Lewis sees that, and then he'll start working that side of the field. Second and two, Calgary. The Stampeders at their own 53. The fake pitch. Uh, Tim Petras has stopped dead in his tracks. Excellent penetration by... Dan Rashevich, the linebacker, along with number 70, Vince Goldsmith. Well, you'll watch the penetration. What Tom Spallatini, the right guard, number 61, look where he ends up. He couldn't handle him because of the penetration by Vince Goldsmith. Goldsmith got down low, won the battle inside. Petras tried to run in there, hit him straight on. Good defense. So Brent Manich drops back for another third down punt, standing at his own 38-yard line with 7.20 remaining in this first half. Calgary leading by a score of 6-4. Albert Brown waits for it at the nine-yard line. Good downfield coverage by the Stampeders as they stop him at the 18-yard line after a 51-yard punt. Discuss what happened and where the CFL goes now for leadership. Don? First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Penalty flag as Guy is the intended receiver. He's got it. Down at the 50 of the Calgary Stampeders, but there is a penalty flag. It's going to be brought back. A holding call against the Rough Riders. Well, that's a great catch by a guy that, you know, too bad it's going to be nullified, but boy, it looked from here like Hopkins had an interception right in his hands, and all of a sudden, number nine went right up, pulled it down, but it's coming back. Holding. Saskatchewan number 62. First down repeated. Has there been another penalty flag in this game? I can't recall one. Not many. Here's what we see. Three backs. You see Milson Jones blocking. And right there you saw the hole. 62 grabbed 74. Mitchell Price pulled him to the ground. And there was a great catch. Stevenson was guilty of the holding. That takes the ball back to the 10-yard line. It's first and 20. The draw play with Tim McRae. McRae got it almost all of it back. 
He got 16 yards on the draw. Well, we've talked every game. We've done a lot of Saskatchewan football games in the play of Tim McRae this year. But watch the draw. Hand off. Up the middle. Good block by Stevenson that time. Bounces off tacklers. He's a tough man to bring down for some reason. He's not real big. He's only like 195 pounds. But they have trouble bringing him down. Tim McRae came into this game needing 63 yards to hit 1,000 for the season. Wilson Jones was hit immediately upon catching that football, but he has enough for the first down. He needed to get to the 30-yard line, and that's just where he got to. If they get another, if they get injuries on their defensive line, he put John Helton in. He looks like he can still play, doesn't he? Well, he's done a fine job with that Calgary defensive line, and of course, he was one of the outstanding defensive linemen of all time in the Canadian Football League. Go by here, watch it, First and 10. Whoa, that one was close to being intercepted, but somehow James Ellingson was able to pull it in. Landry uh, was there to make the tackle. It looked as though it may have been Ken Ford who ran right through that football. It looked like he got it. Watch number 62 to the left of your screen, blocking on Will Johnson. Set, set, keep him out there, put him on his back. And as you say, Ken Ford thought he had an interception, cut in front of Ellingson. Ellingson, good concentration, gets the seven yards. Second down, Saskatchewan. Austin dumps it off again to McCray. This will be another Saskatchewan first down. This short passing game is proving effective for the Rough Riders. Uh, you make first downs. As long as you keep converting first down, sooner or later you reach the goal line. You got to go a long way. They started from deep in their own end after that holding penalty. But if you can just get him 10 yards at a time, that's the quarterback's job. 10 yards at a time will end up with points. 440 is the time remaining in the half. The Rough Riders have dominated statistically but the Stampeders lead it by two points. 6-4 is the score. Again, Ellingson. One of those short passes that produce a gain of nine yards. That's a good read by the quarterback and Ellingson. Calgary rolled to a zone, which means Howard Fields went deep, and they brought Thurman up on the wide receiver. Ellingson saw Fields go deep, and he just sat it down, which means he stopped dead right in the hole, and Austin saw him. An extra down lineman for Calgary as Flint Fleming goes in and Junior Thurman comes out. James Ellingson also goes to the bench as the Rough Riders employ their short yardage offense. Second and one. Austin is going to pass. He's got Narcisse wide open. Good call by Saskatchewan. And Narcisse is in zone bound. They took out that defensive back, Junior Thurman, replaced him with Flint Fleming, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders took advantage for a 58-yard touchdown strike, Austin to Donald Darcy. Well, I'll tell you what's unusual. Usually when you throw that pass, it's to the side of the field you fake to. Austin faked to his left, looked to his left, and threw it all the way across the field to Narcisse. Hopkins went for about 10 or 15 yards, but when Narcisse kept going, he figured he's out of the play, and he turned him loose. And the result is a touchdown. That's well executed by Austin and Narcisse. Let it go, Tony. Let it go, baby. Let it go, Let it go. Donald Narcisse, who leads the Rough Riders in touchdowns, being congratulated as David Ridgway adds the point after. And the Rough Riders have the lead for the first time this afternoon. 341 remaining in the half. We're going to get a good look at Narcisse when we see the replays of these coming back. It'll be a good one. Down Watch Narcisse. Comes in motion. All right. The snap of the ball. Upfield. Now, cross field. Now, Hopkins is with him, but now he starts to back off of him. Lets him go. And that's a mistake because Narcisse cuts right back against the flow. McCurry, or 24, Greg Peterson, had no chance. Narcisse is gone. He had over 1,000 yards coming in. He just added about 55 to his total. He's having an outstanding season. I think that was only a two-man pattern on that play as well, wasn't it? Well, the third man came out real late. The tight end blocked, and then after they clear it out, he went into the hole. He was open, but by then, Austin had spotted Narcisse. I think I'd rather throw it to a guy like Narcisse also. He'll make up a lot of ground for you in a hurry. The Riders covering 90 yards in seven plays. Austin having a very fine afternoon, completing 15 of 18 pass attempts so far for 158 yards. This is Kennard Martin on the kickoff return.
Kenner Martin, 5'11", 203 pounds out of North Carolina, provides the Stampeders with instant field position, a 50-yard return. I think he was running out of gas, but it was an outstanding run. Larry Harrick feels he's got a chance to be as good as anybody that's ever been up here. He lost some eligibility at North Carolina and had to drop out of school, so he was eligible to play. But look at the moves. Now he switches hands, gets the ball on the outside. I remember Leo Cahill always talking about get that ball on the outside hand. I think right now he's run out of gas. Back to the live action. Terrence Jones is running out of receivers. Now he finds Marshall Toner, but he can't make the catch. Toner was wide open. It's a play by Terrence Jones. You know, most of the time when you're getting pressure and you're being tackled, it's very difficult to continue looking downfield. He got loose, but he didn't get the feet set and wasn't able to throw it far enough. But Toner is wide open. There's nobody there. He needed about another yard. He couldn't get the hands underneath it and control it. But that's a heads-up play by Terrence Jones. 3.03 is the time remaining in the half. 11-6, the statue and lead. Second and 10 from the 48-yard line. Terrence Jones being pressured by Jerson. Jerson hauls him down back at the 45. Well, that was a concern. And on that front four, they didn't do it. This is Foster's CFL on CBC, live from McMahon Stadium in Calgary. He indicated that early in the week, he felt that his team may have still been suffering from the effects of that loss to the BC Lions, but he said towards the end of the week, he felt they were rebounding, and that would appear to be the case here on the playing field at McMahon Stadium this afternoon. Albert Brown on this kick return, forced out of bounds by Jim Yock over on the far side of the field. 42 yards on the About 229 left. You have to punt the football. You got to try to get that ball back to the kicker, and sometimes that's a very difficult thing to do. Dan Wicklund, the snapper, let's see what happens to him. Just take him and shove him right back into the backfield. Sometimes you just can't escape. That's Alipate, the middle linebacker. It looks like he's assigned to him because he's not letting him out of his sight. First and 10 for the Rough Riders. They are at their own 31-yard line. Austin, good fake. He dumps it off to Tim McRae. Kent Warnock appeared to be ready to haul down Kent Austin, but he got that throw away just in time to Tim McRae. He tried to look up Phil for Ellingson on run a hook at about 12, 14 yards, but Warnock wouldn't let him get his feet set to throw it, and when Warnock turned him, he was able to spot McRae. Second and five for Saskatchewan. An outstanding all-purpose back. The second leading receiver for the Riders, in addition to being their leading rusher. The leading receiver is this man, Donald Narcisse. Awesome. However, there is a penalty flag, and that will wipe out another fine gain for the Rough Riders. They had an earlier throw to Mark Guy, negated by a holding call. Holding, Saskatchewan number 57. And this second time it's Bob Foley. Guilty of holding, and that brings the ball back to the 25-yard line, 26-yard line. Right there in the middle, Bob Foley on the left here screen, number 57, drags down Mitchell Price. Looks like they want to hold Price today. That's twice now that he's caught the holding trying to block him. So it's second and 15 back at the 26-yard line, Saskatchewan. What a fine catch by Rob Bresciani. He had to go up high to battle two Calgary defenders, one of them being Ron Hopkins, and haul that throw in. That was a nice catch. Bob Bresciani, University of Saskatchewan, Regina Rams. They come with a halfback blitz from the bottom of the screen, number three, McCrary, but look who drops back deep. Doug Landry just drops back in there, and that's a heck of a catch that Bresciani just pulled in and keeps that drive alive. First down, sideline pattern, and the catch is made by Rob Bresciani, and they really stepped out of bounds at the four-yard line. McCrary can't believe that Bresciani caught the football. Back-to-back -back outstanding catches that Bresciani has just made. McCrary had him covered like a blanket on the sidelines, jumped in the air, looked like he was going to intercept it. Watch this. A little push. Now, watch the play McCrary makes. Good play. Looks like he's got it. Slips right through. Bresciani reaches up with the left hand and pulls it in. Takes it down to the four-yard line where he's ruled out of bounds. 
Rob Bresciani, a backup slot back, showing tremendous concentration on the last two passes. One catching in behind Doug Landry and battling David McCrary for that one. Milton Jones fights to the two-yard line on the first and goal play with 135 remaining in the half. Good penetration. Mitchell Price from the defensive tackle position got into the backfield, forced Milton Jones to cut back into the middle. Only picked up about a yard, about two and a half away yet. Second down. The Riders trying to improve their record to 500, seven and seven, and move within two of the Calgary Stampeders and stay two ahead of the BC Lions. Second and goal. Nelson Jones will score. Well, this is McMahon Stadium and not Taylor Field, isn't it? I don't know. I see a lot of green over there. <laughs> green going crazy over there. Good job on the left side blocking. And then when Sean Daniels kicked out the end man on the line of scrimmage, Milton Jones had an easy romp to the end zone. So that Milson Jones touchdown comes with 119 remaining. David Ridgeway will attempt the point after. And this will give the Rough Riders a 12-point advantage. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see a quarterback change by the Calgary Staff Peters as well. Oh, the tough thing about it, they haven't had the ball. You know, they haven't had it. Watch the blocking to the left side. Roger Aldag pulls and leads. There you see the block on uh, by Gary Lewis, 79, and Daniels kicks out the end man, and Milson Jones says, I can run all day here. Watch the left side. Watch how big a hole he's got. You're not going to stop Milson Jones. Not that way, not with an arm. Matt Finlay made a dive in an attempt to bring down Milson Jones, who obviously has fully recovered from that early injury he appeared to suffer to his right ankle. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprising to see a quarterback change at the, I think, the start of the second half. But the big thing right now, when they've had the ball, they haven't moved it. And then they're two and out, two and out. And I think when the halftime statistics come up, we're not going to see a whole lot of offense for the Calgary Stampede. Danny Barrett's got the helmet on, ready to go. Hello, Regina. Yeah. Well, Milton Jones scored the touchdown, but it was two fine receptions by Rob Bresciani that set it up. Hopkins handling this kickoff return. Penalty flag on the play as Hopkins brings it back. And this will probably be an illegal block charged against the Calgary Stampeders on the return by Hopkins. A 30-yard return by Hopkins. But it will almost certainly be brought back. Illegal block. Calgary number 35. First down. Dan Wickliffe was guilty of that illegal block. And the ball goes back inside the 10-yard line. We go to the veteran quarterback now to try to get that offense rolling. They don't have a whole lot of time to do it in one minute and 11 seconds and not the greatest field position. So maybe it is a good spot for your veteran to take over. 11 remaining in the half. Saskatchewan in front, 18-6. Danny Barrett was the starting quarterback for the Stampeders in the first game of the season at Taylor Field in Regina. Won by the Rough Riders in rather dramatic fashion in the final seconds of the game, 32-29. Brock Smith gets the first down, taking the ball out to the 21. Stand up three-step and throw it in a hole. Brock Smith make the catch. See what he does with this one. Sideline pattern, Larry Willis is unable to hang on. Thought the first ball thrown in Willis's direction outside the one that was intercepted by Suter, but it was hard to tell where that one was going, but that one should have been caught. Well thrown. Willis attempting to keep a streak intact. 50 consecutive games with at least one catch. Well, I think when a guy is as valuable to a club as Willis, he should catch at least one. If he's not catching one a game, then their offense isn't moving at all. We move into the final minute of the half. 18-6, Saskatchewan leading. Second and 10, Calgary from their own 21-yard line. Danny Barrett replacing Terrence Jones at quarterback. Barrett will run the ball, and he's got some room. But very quickly, it is closed off. Dan Rashevich, the linebacker, prevented Barrett from getting a first down, and that forces Larry Kaharik to send out the punting unit. Yeah, he's got to punt it with still 55 seconds left. 
Saskatchewan calls timeout. They'll save some time here. They're going to have a chance to get some more points. Uh, Gregory must have been wondering throughout the course of this season if he was going to ever have a healthy linebacker as people were going down, it seemed, to a game. And, of course, the Rough Riders really missed David Albright from that middle linebacking position. He was their leading tackler before he was hurt two games ago. And a very consistent performer. Game in, game out, he came up with the hits. He didn't get a lot of recognition, but I think the players appreciated him because he backed that line up the way a middle linebacker should. Dan Wicklund centering the ball for this third down punt. Maddich stands at the 15-yard line. Good kick. Albert Brown and Vitell mishandle it. Finally picked up by Brown, and he is thrown to the turf very quickly by Jay Christensen. Christensen grabbed him and turned him, and Jay Hot John Hoffman, the defensive back for Saskatchewan, coming over to trying to help, ended up knocking him down. 52 yards, the length of the kick. Still 42 seconds remaining in the first half here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. First and 10 as Tim McRae carries out beyond the 25-yard line. Pickup of six, maybe even seven. In one eye, made the stop. The Rough Riders this year have been involved in six games that have been decided by less than a touchdown. Fortunately, they've been able to win four of them, but two very costly losses by just a couple of points. Don Narcisse out to the 46-yard line. And a well-thrown football. You can see the pattern developing. The inside receiver, in this case, Ellingson, went into the flat. And when he did, all Narcisse does is come into that hole. Ken Austin threw it in there, and that man went and got it. Donald Narcisse has had five games this year with better than 100 yards as a pass receiver. Austin was very fortunate to get that ball away to... Tim McRae, Warnock was all over him as he was earlier in this quarter on another pass that he got away just in time. Well, on that one, he was hit with the arm coming forward. That ball went up like a duck. Fortunate McRae got it. Second down, and McCrary almost intercepted the throw intended for Milson Jones. Had McCrary been able to get two hands on it instead of just one, he was gone for six points. Well, he timed it well. He hung back and hung back, and not until Austin actually stepped it through did he take off. But, boy, he was very close to going the distance. Gets that right hand out there. Couldn't get the second one there. And Austin is somewhat relieved as he heads to the sidelines because that was an interception that was headed for a touchdown had McCrary been able to hang on. Darcy Kopp is the lone man back for this third down kick by Terry Baker. An end over end ball that bounces over the head of Kopp. Kopp has to go back to the one yard line. And on what should be the final play of the half, he dives out to the 17. That was a 59-yard kick, an 11-yard return, and that's the end of the first half. Welcome back to McMahon Stadium in Calgary as we await the start of the second half in this Canadian Football League Western Conference game involving the Stampeders and the Rough Riders. The Rough Riders lead 18-6, and they have the edge in all the statistical departments. 15 first downs to just four for Calgary. And look at the net yards, just 93 for Calgary in the first half, 329 for Saskatchewan. And the Rough Riders had the football almost twice as long. A short kickoff to start the second half, and it works. The ball is fumbled by Jim York, who got it back. Calgary. Well, that is a dangerous thing. I know I was looking at the situation. The Stampeders gave the Saskatchewan Rough Riders the wind and the ball, but I certainly wasn't expecting a short kick. But, boy, it was well executed. Kennard Martin recovered after Jim York went up high to grab that football. You see the ball coming down right here. No white jersey around it at all. Yacht makes the catch easy. It's only that hit right there that causes the ball to come loose. But well executed by the Stampeders and a big gamble. First and 10 from the 44 of the Rough Riders. Danny Barrett continuing where he left off. 
as the Calgary quarterback taking over from Terrence Jones Lorenzo late Gray in the first the half. The Lorenzo Gray is the ball carrier. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it. You know, Don, when you, you make this decision, and you got to give Coach Kuhak a lot of credit. You're trailing 18 to 6. You've given up the wind and so on. We've already mentioned, but you try a short kickoff, and if it fails and you go down 25 to 6, sometimes it'll demoralize the team and they're out of it. But they made it, they got a break, and it'll get them up and get them going. Barrett looking for Marshall Toner, and Barrett, Richie Barrett, Hall Barrett, came Barrett, close Barrett, to intercepting Barrett. that Danny Barrett throw. You know, in the very first game of the season at Taylor Field in Regina back on the 12th of July, as we take a look at the pattern being run by Marshall Toner, the Calgary Stampeders moved into a lead. They appeared to have the game totally under control with just a minute and 51 seconds left, and the Rough Riders scored 17 points in that final 151 to win it by a score of 32-29. Albert Brown back for this Brent Mattage punt. Brown at the two-yard line. And Brown is upended as he gets out to the 18 by Dan Wicklow. Looked like they had him surrounded back around the one or two-yard line, but he made a good move, and he faked to the outside and cut right up the middle. So Austin comes out of a pretty good field position, pretty good stats, too, to start the second half. 20 of 24, any quarterback would take in any game. Sure, I mean, he moved the football well. I'm sure he didn't finish off the drives early, but in the second quarter, he was starting to put them together. Those two catches by Brett Chaney, just near the end of the half, were big. Austin dumping it off to Nelson Jones. That play has been very effective for the Rough Riders. Austin has been looking deep. His deep threats are covered, and he dumps it off to either McCray or Milson Jones. Now, they've had success with that, as you say, Don. And that time, Ken Ford came up to try to make the hit. We're going to see the pressure first. See Will Johnson? Price finally gets in there. They set the screen up, but what's number 97? He misses it. And coming from the backside, Clint Fleming is there to make the hit, but not before they get six. Receiving end of a first down throw out to the 46 yard line. What the Rough Riders are doing in this particular set, they cross those backs underneath. If it's a man to man defense, they go ahead and hit one of the backs. If it's a zone, he throws it right over the top. And in this case, the Mark Guy, 21 yard gain. But look at the hole behind the linebackers and in front of the backs. That's good read on, on Ken Austin's part. Good job. First and 10. Draw play, and Tim McRae will get maybe five. McRae, as we mentioned, came into the ball game needing 63 yards to hit 1,000. He now has 24 yards on five carries. So he has some work to do to become the CFL's second 1,000-yard rusher this year. We'll see the only man over 1,000 yards tomorrow in Edmonton. What an unusual play. Rob Bresciani will go for a touchdown. Uh, unless Hopkins can catch him, and he can't. You're not going to beat Saskatchewan today. Not when that happens. Now, Bresciani's made two outstanding catches. Saskatchewan loves to dump the ball to Tim McRae coming out of the backfield. Dumped the ball to McCray. He tipped it twice with his right hand trying to catch it. And this time he tips it. Who's coming along? But Bresciani catches it and runs for a touchdown. It's your day. Rob Bresciani alertly grabbing that football as it was juggled by Tim McCray. And he goes 59 yards for the major score. He ought to give that ball back and play with it. That's his lucky football. <laughs> I mean, you just don't make the catches that he's made today. He's having a great day. Point after by David Ridgway. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders lead 25-6. Figured that they were done in by the fickle finger of fate. Today, everything is going their way. Well, we've seen just about everything. I don't know what else can happen, but we're going to keep our eyes closed because something will. Hopkins on this kickoff return. This may be that something. 
Sam Peters have had good field position on those kickoff returns. And Hopkins lugs the ball back to the 49-yard line, a 55-yard return. Oh, he said they love to dump the ball to Tim McCray coming out of the backfield. Watch Matt Finley. McCray gets inside of him. They dump the ball. Watch this. One tip, two tips, and look who comes along at the right time. This <laughs> for the touchdown. He just, like I said, he should hang on to that football, make sure they only use it when they're on offense. But that's an outstanding job of being in the right place at the right time. Howard Fields dove and tripped up Bresciani, but he was heading for the end zone when he was upset. Yeah, I just saw my feet cut me off. So just keep coming. Okay. See Hopkins run it back now, as we said, Don mentioned. They've had two excellent kick returns out to midfield. The offense hasn't done anything with it, but watch Hopkins. He's darting and diving. Should have tried to come outside here. Right now, he should have just stayed out here with his blockers, but he tries to come back inside, and you're using a lot of energy when you're running and making that many stops and starts, but still, when you put the ball down in the other team's territory, you have nothing to worry about. It's up to the offense to get the points from there. The injured Saskatchewan player is Mark Ernest. The Rough Riders will return home following this game to entertain the Toronto Argonauts a week today. Then they are at home to Calgary on the 22nd. They travel to Calgary on the 29th and wind up the season against the Edmonton Eskimos on the 5th of November. So in effect, with the three games this month against the Calgary Stampeders, they determine their own destiny. Lorenzo Graham gets one yard, not much more. He's stopped by Rinkwalder, who has replaced James Curry at that defensive tackle position. The way this game's gone, Don, they're not going to win the football game today in their usual fashion. That's running the football and controlling the game. They're going to have to throw the football because they're not winning the battle up front, and that was Coach Gary's concern coming in. 10.53 is the time left in the third quarter. Second and nine, Calgary. They trail 25-6. And Larry Willis keeps that string intact. Now 51 consecutive games with at least one catch. First down, Calgary. Well thrown football by Danny Bear, too. Willis just down and out, but watch for Richie Hall. Underneath, Harry Skippery breaks out. You see Richie Hall can't get there. The zone defense, Richie Hall's got to try to get out underneath it. You're asking a lot. He can't get there fast enough if the ball's thrown properly, and it was. First and 10, Calgary. They are at the 34 of Saskatchewan. Danny Barrett replacing Terrence Jones as Calgary quarterback. Fumbles the exchange from center. Penalty flags fly. The Rough Riders claim they've recovered. The officials agree. And obviously, the penalty was against the Calgary Stampeders with that Saskatchewan offense coming onto the field. I was going to say this. Okay. I mean, the ball has to be snapped for the play to start. Danny Parrott backed out from center without the ball. And under the rules, it should have been blown dead in five yards. Procedure. Calgary number 61. Decline. First down, Saskatchewan. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They're getting the football. It's hard to believe. Let's see what happens. Well, we can't see if the ball ever moved, but the ball wasn't snapped. It doesn't matter. It's Saskatchewan's ball now. It's too, too late. Barrett's not very happy. That's what he is complaining about to referee Dave Ewell, that the ball was not snapped. Again, Austin swings it out to Tim McRae. And McCray goes out of bounds with a gain of about nine yards. Austin plays it out to Tim McCray. Austin has really held a hot hand this afternoon. At the start of the season, it looked as though Tom Burgess was going to erase the record for most touchdown passes in a single season. He had 19 in the first six games of the year. But then he had some problems, and John Gregory made the switch to Kent Austin as his starting quarterback. And what a day he is having. Second and one. Short yardage offense, and Nelson Jones gets a big hole. Greg Peterson hauls him down, but not before Nelson Jones got to the 32-yard line of Calgary. And again, it's that left side. You see the left side. There he is, Gary Lewis at the top. All day pulls. Daniels makes his block. All day turns around on Kenny Ford, and from there on, Nelson Jones is just, just go run as far as you can, and that's what he does. But again, the left side, 
That offensive line in that short yard, he's doing a great job for him. Craig Peterson, who made the tackle, broke a thumb on September 18th against Edmonton, broke a bone in his wrist on September 23rd against Toronto. He's playing with casts on both hands. Austin deep for Narcisse. Touchdown! That's just determination and going to the football. He started a normal post pattern inside and then took it straight up the field. And looks like Thurman has him covered beautifully. The ball's thrown a long way. Narcisse just laid out and got it. That's good reception by Don Narcisse. And this will be the sixth game that Don Narcisse has gone over 1,000 yards or 100 yards. He now has two touchdowns. And that is the fourth time this year that he has scored two touchdowns in a game. The point after improves the catch with the lead to 32-6. In the third quarter, and the Rough Riders are turning this one into a rough. Well, if there was any question as to whether or not they were demoralized by that last play loss to BC at home last week, they have been erased with the performance today at McMahon Stadium. Bernard Martin returns the kickoff to the 47-yard line. James Ellingson took him out of bounds. There are the two players who combined for that Saskatchewan touchdown, quarterback Kent Austin and receiver Donald Narcisse. He went inside, Don, and he took that seam. Greg Peterson stepped up, so he goes, tries to go behind him. That ball, good coverage by Thurman. The ball's just a little bit far. Narcisse makes the play and goes and gets it. When he comes inside on that post pattern, if the safety man is sitting there, you're not going to throw the ball there. So he takes it upfield, and he makes the catch. Narcisse with 129 yards so far today. Two touchdowns. Danny Barrett, Willis, turned to run before he had possession of the football. Sure did, Don. You can see it from here. He turned his head to look inside. The ball hit him and fell out of his hands. But that's the way it's been for Calgary all day. They haven't gotten anything going offensively. You know, I think a lot of people anticipated in this ball game that the Calgary Stampeders would really solidify their hold on second place, catching a team that appeared to be very flat and with several key players out of the lineup with injuries. Well, you know, you still have to play the game. And so far today, Calgary hasn't done it. Saskatchewan has. Over the middle, and Brock Smith will get a first down and more. Not much more, thanks to Albert Brown, but it looked as though he had an opportunity, if he could get away from Brown, to go a long way. While they catch Saskatchewan in that zone defense, you see the linebackers really running out of there, opening a hole right across the middle. That's where Brock Smith goes. Right here, he needs to make this move. He gets outside here, he got a long way to run, but Albert Brown brings him down. Marshall Toner. As we return to live action, takes it to the 27-yard line. Another first down as the Stampeders are going with that hurry-up offense. Well, they have to go to the hurry-up offense, Don. Down 32 to 6. You better do something. You don't have time to mess around. First and 10, the ball at the 27-yard line. Barrett has Zeno for a first down to the 2-yard line. First catch for Zeno, but that provides the Stampeders with a first and goal. Well, Danny Barrett looks to his right, but watch him throw it in the hole. Right there, no one there. 11, Zeno goes up, and it looks like he's going to drag Albert Brown all the way in. But this is the first spark that we've seen from the Stampeder offense today. First and goal, Calgary, from the two-yard line. 6.57 remaining in the third quarter. They trail 32-6. The second man, Lorenzo Graham, gets to the end zone. Well, very quickly, the Stampeders counter the touchdown by Don Narcisse. And that's the type of offense Larry Kuharik was anticipating today from his Stampeders. Yeah, he was really anticipating going well today. You know, he said, we got a chance to play at home next two weeks. He said, we need to win this one today, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Look at it. Lead blockers, Petros, one hit. Bounces off Suter, and he's in. The big thing is they move down quickly. Three excellent passes. Shit, let's show them who we are. Let's go, baby. 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 Let's go, baby
Lorenzo yeah. Graham trying to chat things up at that Stampeder bench with 6.51 remaining in the third quarter. Hey, Stampeder has started this second half with a short kickoff. This time they bounce the ball to Natal at the 25-yard line. And he works his way out to the 41 before being stopped by Darcy Cobb with help from Kennard Martin. Well, the offense scored very real quick. They got the football very quickly. It was into the end zone. But right now, they've got to slow this guy down. Austin with 389 yards in the air. He's having a field day. they got to come up with a turnover. Statistics quarterbacks dream of 25 completions in 29 attempts for 389 yards. Three touchdown throws. Drop play. Nelson Jones gets five yards. The play's been real successful for him today. Just a straight draw in behind Anderson, all dag and Poley. Run to daylight, and that's all he's doing. Five yards of carry, and it's almost six. They're averaging about five yards with it all day. Second down, Saskatchewan. They credit to Jones with a four-yard gain. Austin threw that one up, and I think Ellingson was the intended receiver, but he was throwing into double coverage as the linebacker Landry that dropped back to help out Howard Field. Yeah, they brought 24. Watch 24, Greg Peterson on a safety blitz. He's the guy that puts the pressure. He's got to get rid of it. Just let it go. Get it downfield. But they had double coverage on him, and he wasn't able to run free, and that caused the ball to go over everybody's head. Darcy Kopp and Kennard Martin are back for this third down kick by Terry Baker. He is punting well. Pop takes it up the 25-yard line. Still on his feet as he drives out to the 35. 534 remains in the third quarter. That was one of the shorter kicks of the day by Baker. Just 37 yards with a nine-yard return. are the bane of every coach's existence at times, aren't they? Drives them all crazy. Marshall Toner is driving that Saskatchewan defense, crazy. He takes it to the 45-yard line. He found the seam right in behind the linebackers, and Danny Barrett found him. But we're talking about those kickers and what it is. Watch it. Right in behind the linebackers. Big hole in there. In between the zone, defense suitor has to come get him, and they're back to their hurry-up offense again. A 31-yard gain for Marshall Toner. Barrett goes to the sidelines. Larry Willis is caught. Richie Hall was the one who made contact with him, limiting his gain to about three yards with 4.46 remaining in the third quarter. You talk about kickers anyway, there. they really don't have a coach. Very few teams have a coach to coach the kickers. So the kickers have to survive by themselves. I mean, I give them a hard time anyway because I figure the only people that are more second in command, the kickers are first, quarterbacks are second. They're all strange, <laughs> but the kickers are the worst. Barrett's pass intended for Marshall Toner. And it was knocked away. It will be third and gotta, five. They and they're go. leaving the offense sure. in there. You gotta go get it. They're still down. They're, they're down 32 to 13. They've got to get a first down here and put it in the end zone. They can't be messing around now, kicking the ball away. Because one, they haven't stopped out. They need three touchdowns to erase that 19-point lead. Zeno has a first down, catching the ball in front of Harry Skipper at the 30-yard line. Oh, they lined up, brought the pressure after him on that. That's good execution. You saw Tim Petro step up inside to try to block. Threw it on time. If he doesn't throw that ball on time, Harry Skipper's going to get it. Skipper played it as well as you could. You can't play that any better. You can see the good hit coming, Rasselwich and Lewis, but that ball was thrown exactly where it had to be. First and 10, Calgary from the 30 of Saskatchewan. Barrett for Willis, too high. Got up in the wind. He didn't get that delivered properly, and he threw it a little bit late. You could almost see that hole coming as, as Barrett was ready to throw, but he a little bit late throwing, and he tried to power it in there, and it, it wobbled on him, went over everybody's head. Tom Forrest is not dressed for this game. He's the third quarterback in the Calgary scheme. He is helping on the sidelines, shouting instructions to Danny Barrett. 339 remaining in the third quarter. Barrett 
being chased by Eddie Lowe gets the pass away incomplete. Intended for Larry Willis. But Eddie Lowe was in pursuit of the quarterback, forcing him perhaps to hurry the throw. Well, that's that dash pattern that, that uh, we see Calgary run a lot, where they drop the quarterback back, in this case, Barrett, then he swings out to one side or the other. Eddie Lowe was on a blitz up the middle, and he just changed direction. And you could see it coming. You knew Barrett was going to get hit because Lowe was very close to him all the way. So on third and ten, the Stampeders line up in field goal formation. McLaughlin had a 58-yard field goal a year ago. This one from 37 yards out is good. Well, if the Stampeders hope to fight back, their defense will have to force the Riders to turn the ball over. Calgary right now would like to see a two and out with 312 remaining in this third quarter. And Austin has other ideas, and so does Rob Bresciani. Boy, when you start talking about a Foster's MVP, Kent Austin gets consideration, but so does Rob Bresciani. I wasn't sure he's throwing that to Bresciani, but again, he showed up to catch it. I thought he was looking for Ellingson coming before Bresciani made the catch, going against the flow. See Ellingson coming from the left side. Here comes Bresciani. He was going to Bresciani. He led him perfectly. Bresciani pulled it down. Another big catch. Maybe he gave him that ball back. Wilson Jones battles to the 50 of the Stampeders. A gain of seven yards. Jones gets those tough yards for you. Yeah, this is what Saskatchewan wants right now. Get that thing grinded out hard. And when you need someone to grind it out, give it to Nelson Jones. He gets in behind the trap block by Bob Poley was pulling, and he just cuts inside. And he's, we've talked about it numerous times. He bounces around. It doesn't look like he's going anywhere, but he always gets yards. Mark Guy wide left, Donald Narcisse to the right. Narcisse has scored two touchdowns today. Here comes the safety blitz. Peterson was coming from the back side. The throw intended for Narcisse. It's incomplete, and the Riders will be forced to kick the ball. Well, I think that Ken Austin can expect that kind of pressure all the time. You're into the situation if you're the Stampeders. You have to take chances. Now, they've safety blitz like three of the last four plays. They're trying to create turnovers. The only bad thing is when you go one-on-one -on -one and try to create them, sometimes you get burnt with it. Terry Baker with a 67-yard single earlier in the ball game. 145 remains in the third quarter. Darcy Kopp and Kennard Martin are back for the Baker punt. Kopp goes back to the five-yard line. He did a good job of returning up to the 29. Rick Walter made the tuck. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Sideline for Zeno. Zeno gets away from Albert Brown. He has a first down up to the 46. If Calgary gets a touchdown here, this is going to be an interesting finish. Yeah, they, all of a sudden they seem to have got a little bit of a spark. Straight back, got Toner going down the seam. He looks for him and then goes right to the out to Zeno. Zeno got a good move right here on Albert Brown, steps outside. Calgary's going that hurry up. They've got to move. Sideline again to Zeno. Similar pattern to the previous one, and he'll have nine yards. They need a touchdown quick. They can't afford the long drive right now. They've got to score in a hurry. And the only way they're going to do that is through the air. This is when your game plan goes out the window and you throw the ball to the open people and try to move it down the field. Might be a nice, this might be a nice time right now, a little play action pass, second and short yardage, because you know they're going to go after it on third down. Second down conversions have been a problem for Calgary this afternoon, but not this time with Tim Petras. Fighting his way to the 52-yard line with two seconds remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, Barrett starts like he's going to sprint out and just slips the ball to Petros. He comes right back up the middle. Gets enough for that first down to keep him moving. Actually, that was the final play of the third quarter. And the Calgary Stampeders will have a first down when we come back. Well, I was surprised that the officials signaled an end to the third quarter. They aired. 
There was time left on the clock when Petrus went down, so they will run one more play before the third quarter ends. Oh, Rasevich from the backside jumps all over Danny Barrett, preventing him from throwing, and that is the end of the third quarter. Yeah, that was, there's something really funny there. The five red jerseys of the Stampeders blocked nobody. It looked like they were confused on the snap. But watch the white jerseys come through. How many are there? Jump right on them. They saw the safety blitz coming. Danny Barrett stood up in audible. And coming from the bottom of the screen is the inside halfback Larry Hove. But Rasovich got there first. Well, the officials initially had signaled an end to the third quarter, but they realized their error and put the time back on the clock. But now we start the fourth quarter, second and 18, Calgary. They are at their own 51-yard line. I'm not sure whether Brock Smith or Larry Willis was the intended receiver, but at any rate, it is incomplete. Once again, they come with that halfback blitz. Larry Hoke came outside, and Barrett sprinted right to it. That's why he had to throw it in a hurry. 525 yards for Saskatchewan. Well, when you saw Ken Austin's stats on the board, he's up around 400 yards in the air. In fact, over 400. It's not hard to understand why they have 500 yards of it. 406 of them through the air. Brent Maddox with the third down punt and a good one. Albert Brown at the 10 yard line. And this is going to be a good return. Brock Smith was sent flying. Albert Brown was just tripped up by Andy McVay, or Brown might have gone all the way. A 51 yard run back after a 50 yard kick. Well, this is an outstanding run. You can see the see it coming right here. You know he's in business because he got between the first wall and now he bounces outside and picks up some blocking out outside. There's the trip. McVay just got him, and Albert Brown's still down over on the sidelines. I think it was just from the way he landed. Again, Wick, Wicklum's having a tough day after he snaps that ball. Alapati says, "I got you." Okay, good job, baby. Wicklam says, okay, I got away from the guy that was blocking me. Let's see how things are going. Not very good. He gets it again. But right here, it's hard to believe it. It, it almost broke up. The only man left was Maddich, and he went down, and he, I think he banged it when he fell because McVay just dove out and got a hand on him. Well, it's first and ten Saskatchewan from the 51 of Calgary. We remind you this program is copyright and is strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, distribution, or exhibition in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. I don't think the Calgary Stampeders would want to see parts of this game again anyway. Well, Doug Landry, the middle linebacker, has been a busy man today, and he's going to get a lot more the remaining part of this game because they're going to run the football, sidestep him, jump on his back, and pull him down. They're going to run right at him, that's for sure, in the remaining 14 minutes of this game. Second and four, Saskatchewan. The ball is at the 45. Sean Daniels started outside, tried to cut back in, and there were four red jerseys over there. Well, they run this counter. It's misdirection for Ken Moore and Roger Aldag. Try to lead Daniels around the corner. They had success with it early. Now they're two yards short. Ford made the initial contact with Daniels. 13.08 remaining in the ball game. They're going to go after it, too. They're not going to kick the football on the third and almost two situations. I'm a little surprised at that call. Now, this is a little bit surprising when you're sitting there with a 16-point lead. If they make the first down, though, it's a good move. Obviously, they have confidence in their running game. Nelson Jones stumbled as he took the handoff. Where are they going to mark his forward progress? Doug Landry thinks he's stopped him. That's what it's going to come down to the mark because he did stumble. And just imagine, it comes down to how far he stumbled forward before somebody stopped. Yes, the Stampeders have stopped them on a third down turnover all over when they failed to make it at the 41 yard line you, know, you try to think of just why maybe he figures with the windy would you know something would happen there but I, I really believe on a third down two situation and 16 point lead make them go as far as you can kick it and hope kick it out of bounds 
12.32, the time remaining here at McMahon Stadium. Wherever you're looking in this afternoon, we hope you're enjoying the action. Rick Walter is after Barrett. Now Rashevich is in pursuit. And Barrett was very fortunate to turn that play into a four-yard game. Very fortunate. You know, when he's coming around on that, he's just running for his life. He's running to his left, and he made the cut inside and picks up four yards. So right now, I really believe the Calgary Stampeders are in three-down territory. I don't, I don't think they're going to worry about kicking the football anymore. They're going, they've got to move the ball. That was the third down gamble by Milson Jones that failed to produce a Saskatchewan first down. Second and six from the 45-yard line. Barrett is throwing deep for Willis. He can't catch up with it. Harry Skipper was Harry racing Willis down the sidelines with Willis, and it will be third and six. Third down. I think they're going to go after this. I don't. I really don't think they'll kick the football. What do you know? Well, I saw Harry point to stay in the game, stay in the game, and now all of a sudden they're coming out. I, I don't know if I was Calgary right now. They've got to score. Unless they're hoping for a break. They got the one at their back. Maybe they hope that Maddie's Maddie's been kicking well all day. Albert Brown shaken up on his last return. Natal is the lone man back for this Brent Maddich kick. Natal takes it at the 13-yard line and is brought down at the 28. That's where Saskatchewan will scrimmage first and 10, leading by 16 with 11-21 remaining in the game. Well, it was a good block by Sean Daniels down there on that punt right there. Hit Tony Spalatini, Tom's brother, and made an excellent block and allowed Vitale to get that run back. 26-32 is pretty impressive for Kent Austin today. Target being covered by Thurman. It will be second and 10 Saskatchewan. Awesome. Haven't been many times this afternoon when Austin has missed a receiver. That was pretty good read by Austin, too. He read the one-on-one -on -one coverage and he just sailed over his head. Will Johnson has to get up and try to hold him in there. He feels he's being held by Bob Foley. He's making his point to the official. No one listens. In their last five games, the Stampeders have averaged four sacks per game. That Saskatchewan offensive line has done a good job today of protecting Austin. What a catch by Bresciani. Oh, my goodness. He went up with a defensive back, David McCrary, all over him. And one-handed, he hauled it in. That, that, that's an unbelievable play again. I mean, McCrary's not even playing a football. He's got a hold of Bresciani, but what's the left hand? Watch this. There's nothing to this game. You don't need one hand to catch the ball. I could see why he didn't get the ball out of their hand in the air. McCray had a hold of it. 29 yards for Rob Bresciani, and as Jeff Fairholm said, a replacement comes in and does a pretty good job. You don't want to let too many of those replacements come in or you won't have a job. That's, that's one of the rules in this game. Don't get hurt. The guy comes in maybe better than you. That's another outstanding catch. He's made four of them today now. Nelson Jones stopped at the line of scrimmage. The good hit by linebacker Ken Ford. And Ford and Nelson Jones exchange words as they both get to their feet. Ford is moved out of there by a teammate. Stay out of there. There's a lot of talking, yipping and yapping, but comes a time when you still have to play football. Bresciani come back and he needed to go rest up a little bit. May have said, it's my football, remember? That's right. So the way he's played today, it has been his football. Draw play with Tim McRae. He won't get the first down. And the Riders this time will send out the funding unit. 9.47 remaining in the game. The style of game the Calgary Stampeders play, they, it's very hard for them to come back. You know, they like to run the football, mix in some passing, but... As we said, their game plan had to change when it was 32-6. to six. They just have to open it up and throw it all over the place. Baker stands at the 45-yard line. Third down kick. Yeah. Off the side of his foot, and it bounces well back into the field of play. Darcy Cox takes it. It looked as though it was going to go out of bounds, and I think... Cop anticipated that it would as well. 
9.20 is the time remaining with the riders leading by 16. They trail by 16 points with only 9.20 remaining. They have to make things happen in a hurry. Oh, movement of the line of scrimmage. Larry Willis way offside. He'll make the catch, but this one is going to be brought back. And Willis, upset with himself, fires that ball up against the wall in front of the stands. He was at least five yards offside. Oh, yeah, I mean, with any doubt, he just took off and ran, then realized it and then stood there. He's very fortunate that he got enough yards to force Saskatchewan to take the penalty. Offside, Calgary number 89. So you just see First throws, it takes a pretty good hit. You don't mind taking those hits when they count. You don't like to take them when a guy's five yards offside. First and 15, Calgary, but they are now backed up to their 21-yard line. <laughs> Danny Barrett may have been emphasizing the snap count in that huddle. This time Willis goes deep. He's got it. But there's a penalty flag. It could be a rough play call yeah. against Saskatchewan. And that's what it appears to be as Barrett was really decked after throwing deep to Willis. This is one I don't think he could throw it any farther. I mean, he really let it go. Roughing the passer, Saskatchewan 77, first down. Rinkwalder decking Danny Barrett after he threw the ball. Let's watch Willis come down, starts inside and jumps outside of him. Skipper had good inside position. He went outside. Good catch, good concentration. And then 15 yards for roughing the passer, and that's that changes field position in a hurry. We'll see the hit coming. There it is. It is a little bit late. He, he hit him with the shoulders, and I mean, he just grabbed with the hands a little bit and held him up. But he hit him with the shoulder, and the referee's standing there. Redemption for Larry Willis for that previous miscue, a 51-yard gain. First and 10, Calgary from the 23-yard line. Zeno well covered by Harry Skipper on the sideline. Zeno thought he was too well covered, but there was no penalty for oh, I think he was too. I mean, he makes a cut on the sideline and he gets hit in the back and knocked down, and he's got inside position. But the big thing is they're dropping that linebacker out when they blitz the halfback. They're going to have to go to the other side of the field against that. 8 11 remaining in the game, 32 16. Saskatchewan lead. They're going to drop out at this time. So, yeah. Lost it for Graham. Touchdown. Nice touch by Danny Barrett. Just lofting it over the head of the linebacker, Dan Rashevich. It was touch. That's exactly what it is. You got one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker on Lorenzo Graham. That's what you like when a quarterback speed on a linebacker. He just dropped it over his head. Graham caught it. Grasovich shoved him into the end zone. Don't go away. This one is far from over. 7.57 remaining. 32-23. A uh, 22 is the score. Now it's 32-23 as McLaughlin adds the point after. At one point, the Calgary Sam Peters in the third quarter trails 32-6. Now just nine points separate the Rough Riders and the Sam Peters with 7.57 remaining. Two touchdowns for Lorenzo Graham. Good kick. Albert Brown takes it on the run at the 10-yard line. And Brown is brought down at the 33. 23-yard return. Lorenzo Graham capping that 84-yard drive in just three plays. And importantly for the Stampeders, they used up just a minute and 23 seconds. Well, they've got to score quick. This is about as fast as you can do it in three plays. Just drops it over the linebacker. Graham grabs it, makes the catch. they got to get two and out if you're a Stampeder fan. Saskatchewan needs to control the football. Tim McRae won't go anywhere. He's in the grasp of Matt Finlay. 
Well, they've been running that counter play all day, and this time Stampeders were ready for it. Matt Finley was already just sitting back there waiting on whoever showed up, and it was the man with the ball. A loss of four yards. Kent Austin with 442 passing yards. A Saskatchewan team record today. He'll try and get more right here. There's a penalty flag. Austin can't find the receiver. He runs the ball, and he is hit hard by Ford. Procedure, Saskatchewan number 25 is declined. Third down. Third down, seven yards to go from the 37. 7.01 is the time remaining. Ben Suter, who is a scuba diving instructor, may have talked some of his teammates into wearing that type of glove. Darcy Kopp waits for the third down kick, gets away from Mark Ernest, still in his feet. And he stumbles forward to the 48-yard line. 6.42 is the time remaining. That was a six-yard run back after a 31-yard kick. Scott? Don, uh, let's discuss a tire here for just a moment. You were just talking about James Ellingson's gloves. Uh, in terms of the extra edge, we credit Jeff Fairholm, the Saskatchewan receiver, with this idea. You can see Ellingson's gloves. He's got them taped onto his hands. What they actually are are glass cutter's gloves that uh, Fairholm has brought up from Denver, and it's got the Velcro-type effect. As soon as the ball touches them, it virtually sticks to them, and it certainly gives them an extra edge. Glass cutters, scuba divers, what do I know? They're gloves. Rock Smith gets about five yards. I've never heard of glass cutters gloves, but I guess you'd have to protect your hands if you were in that profession. If you were in that profession, you wouldn't want to mess up too often either, would you? be very sure. 603 is the time left. Saskatchewan's defense, Don, sorry, is sitting back deep. Going to try to force them to throw it underneath. That time, Brock Smith got four, but they're really getting deep in the secondary. Second and five. Willis was the target. He couldn't haul it in. It was just a little too far for him. He had to reach out, and he had Glenn Suter, the safety, coming over to help in the coverage. Yeah, they're going to go this time. See, Kaharik right away says, stay off the field. We're going after this one. The hole was there. The ball's just delivered a little bit high and too far forward. Get it down in the number area. He'll catch it for you. Third down, five. Got to have this one. Larry Hogue and Suter were covering Larry Willis. A big third and five gamble for the Stampeders. They trail by nine. Barrett drills it. It's made for a first down. A nice reception, too. Willis made a nice reception. Excellent coverage by Harry Skipper. Looked like if all the way he came back, left his feet, kept that body right in front of him. Let's get a, get a good look at a pass reception and good coverage. Look at Skipper. I watch him close. But here's the key, the body. Kept that body extended. Skipper has to go through it, and Willis makes the catch. 4.58 is the time remaining. First and 10 from the 43 of Saskatchewan. Here comes Richie Hall. There's the pass for Brock Smith into the 34-yard line. Get a lot of halfback blitz, especially from the short side of the field. Every time, Richie Hall's been the guy to come on the blitz from the short side of the field. Still look for one of these times if they can get a, just an extra second go to the top, go to the wide side, hit a guy down the middle. Marshall Toner and Zeno go wide to the left. Two flankers out to the right. Hand off to Lorenzo Graham. He gets the first down. He's inside the 32-yard line with 4-12 remaining. They need to score pretty quick. Don't want to waste too much time here because they're, they're going to have to have the, another possession. They have to score and then get the ball back quickly. Four new Stampeder players every week to show mid October. He's here to collect the whole series. First and ten from the 32. Sideline pattern and Willis takes it, or Zeno, I should say, makes the catch in front of Skipper and Zeno gets down to the 12. 
Good job by Zeno. Six foot three, 205 pounds. Watch him make this catch and then shrug off the tackle by Harry Skipper. Watch him make the catch. Bang. Good balance, good strength. Turns back upfield. Puts it down into the 11-yard line. Good job. Zeno with Tulane's all-time leading receiver. Fine talent there with Terrence Jones. Five catches today for 80 yards. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. Barrett into the end zone. Willis can't catch it. Most disappointed person on the field right now is Lorenzo Graham. Swung out of the backfield and nobody covered him. He was in the end zone all by himself. He shook his head. Quarterback decides to go. He threw a bullet just a little bit high. 3.05, the time remaining. The clock is running. It's second and 10. Receivers to either side of the field. Penalty fly. Dumped off to Lorenzo Graham too high. Is this a procedure call or offside? Too much pressure, though. Three white jerseys hit Danny Barrett. This is the time you have to have time to throw the ball. Offside, Saskatchewan. I don't, I don't think there's much doubt about it. They've decided they're going to work the right side of the Saskatchewan defense. All their passes have come over to this side of the field. Good hit. Brinkwalder, Goldsmith, they're all there. 2.45, the time remaining. 32-23, Saskatchewan leads. It's second and five from the six-yard line, Calgary, as a result of that offside penalty against the Rough Riders. Movement again at the line of scrimmage. No penalty flag into the end zone for Willis. He can't hang on. He attempted to juggle the ball. It will be third and five, but they're going to send in the field goal unit. They need a field goal and a touchdown to win the ball game. Well, we're going to see Willis get inside. There he goes on Skipper, and the ball's up. Skipper goes through the interception, which is dangerous. He's got to catch that. He's got to catch that football. It was in his hands. McLaughlin will be attempting a 13-yard field goal. Still 2.29 remaining. He puts it through. So now it's a six-point game. The field goal from the 35. Kent Austin looking for Guy. It's incomplete. 2.23 is the time left. That's a good decision by Saskatchewan. Take that ball on the 35-yard line because with that wind behind them, they could end it up in a lot worse field position. Kind of thought they might run on first down, though. Try to get something going. Right now, it's a big down for Austin. Those statistics are great, but he's got to hit this one. He completes the pass, and it's Rob Bresciani struggling and getting the first down. Now let me throw these statistics at you. In a five-year CFL career, Rob Bresciani, coming into today's game, had been on the receiving end of passes for 117 yards. Today, that catch gives him six receptions for 160 yards and a touchdown. I guess that means this is the best day of his career. Is that, I guess <laughs> it's a dangerous right here. They should make this. You only need about an inch. Stop just short of a first down. Third down gamble, and Kent Austin will keep. They stack him up right at the line of scrimmage. But as you said, he only needed a couple of inches. There's 2.02 remaining in the game. I was just looking at the marker on the other side of the field, right on the 45-yard line. And that ball was only an inch or so from it. Get him, in, get him some air time. first down as revealed by our reverse angle camera it didn't make it by much on the other side of the field John Gregory breathed a sigh of relief and now Larry Kaharick is hoping that his defense will be able to come up with something to stop the Rough Riders and more importantly have some time left on the clock McCrary coming on a halfback blitz he can't get through Mitchell Price right. can't get off tonight on the far side is James Ellingson. 
Well, whether those are glass cutter's gloves or scuba diver's gloves, he was wearing the right equipment to haul in that Kent Austin throw. Junior Thurman went to sleep. Halfback blitz, quarterback scrambled out. He turned his back and let Ellingson in behind him. Can't go to sleep in a situation like that. We got a Can't go to sleep at that stage of the game. Bill Johnson decking Austin after throwing the ball. First and ten, Saskatchewan. They're at the 34-yard line, and Milton on the ground this time, Milton Jones will be stopped after a three-yard gain with 137 remaining. Calgary desperately needs that ball back, and the Rough Riders desperately trying to keep it away from them. Well, they're going to take the 20 seconds, I would think, in the huddle, 16-15. Got a good look at it right in front of him. What's the hammer? I'm talking about what's the hammer. That's the halfback. Halfback blitz again. B. McCrary, I think, if it's any of them. Movement at the line of scrimmage, and this is going to be an offside call, almost certainly against Calgary. I mean, that's a big loss for the Bombers if he's not able to play. Calgary, still second down. A rotator cuff problem, uh, an unusual injury for a linebacker, but he is going to be out the Winnipeg lineup for the rest of the regular season, it would appear. Paul Randolph will take his spot tomorrow in the game against Edmonton. Second down. I don't know whether they've got it or not. Depends upon the forward progress of Wilson Jones. He had to get to about the 24-yard line. 113 of the time remaining. That's where that linebacker does. He has to decide. What he does is He's going to key Milson Jones. Wherever Milson Jones goes, he's going, because that's who carries on short. Down here on that second down. And a three back across the ground. Go to Brett Janney, right? Milson Jones might put it beyond the reach of the San Peters. He takes it down to the three-yard line. And again, where'd he go? Left side. The left side. Gary Lewis at that left end. Ken Moore, Roger Alday, and Sean Daniels. That's where they've been the most dangerous. You're going to see it again, left side. There goes Aldag, 44. Inside, Aldag makes the block right here on Hopkins to allow him outside. Hopkins finally gets a hold of him, but too late. That's all you need. Just screen him and give Jones a chance. Well, there have been some outstanding single-game performances by quarterbacks this year in the Canadian Football League. Matt Dunnigan, Sean Salisbury, but Austin's 483 yards are the best so far this season. Milson Jones driving down to the two-yard line with 45 seconds left. Don't pop up the ball. Have somebody pick it out of the air and run the distance on you. That's it. Don't hand it to anybody. I really don't take any chances. Yeah, on the sidelines, there were instructions, run the quarterback safe. You betcha. There's no chance. Don't hand that ball off. Gary Hoffman talking to John Gregory and saying, make sure we run the sneak. Now, it's not important that they score. No. Not important. They don't need to score. They just don't want to turn things over on a pop. The ball pop out of somebody's hand. This is the 11th drive of this series. The Rough Riders did exactly what they had to do after Calgary had closed within six. They maintained possession. And they get the touchdown. And again, right behind Gary Lewis and Ken Moore, Nelson Jones was hit right at the line of scrimmage but fell forward to put it in the end zone. Milson Jones just breaking that plane as he reached in for the major score that will put a finish to any comeback hopes of the Calgary Stampeders with only six seconds remaining. Now Larry Koharik disappointed. He thought that perhaps his team would stage a miracle finish. Somewhat similar to what the Rough Riders did in the first game of the season at Taylor Field back in July 12th. But the Riders, on their last possession, controlled the football. They marched the length of the field from the 35-yard line. In 12 plays, they put it in the end zone, and it's 39-26. Well, we said coming in, you know, the first series of plays, Ken Austin was on the field, and he had to get a better performance out of the offense and himself. This, this game, he hadn't been putting points on the board. One touchdown last week against the Lions. But today, Bresciani, Narcisse, Milson Jones, and it, the biggest thing they did, as you mentioned, Don, that last drive when they had to do it, 
They put a, what, a 12 play drive together, scored a touchdown, and wiped out any chance for the Stampede. That's a good job by the offense. That may be the hardest yard that Milson Jones has ever picked up. He was stopped initially, but on second effort, he broke the play. That's all he needed to do. He worked hard to get there. But that man, Ken Moore, right here, did a good job. He went right behind him and Gary Lewis for the that, that one hard yard that he, you mentioned. A number of outstanding individual performances today by the Rough Riders. Milson Jones, Don Narcisse, Kent Austin, and Rob Bresciani. The return. Andy McVay fumbles the football. Picked up by Hopkins. Hopkins trying to pitch it out. And on the final play of the ball game, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders recover. And John Gregory celebrates a 39-26 victory as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders even their season record at 7-7. Seven and seven. They move within two points of the second place Calgary Stampeders and more importantly break out of a third place tie with the BC Lions. And on top of that they have now beaten the Stampeders twice. I know they played two more times but they have defeated them twice in their first two meetings. So for John Gregory and his Saskatchewan Rough Riders, this will be a pleasant flight home as they celebrate Thanksgiving weekend with a 39-26 win. The Riders received a number of solid performances offensively today from people like Milson Jones, from Donald Narcisse, from Rob Bresciani, and from quarterback Kent Austin. Bresciani with a touchdown, Austin with three touchdown passes. We've decided they will share our Foster's MVP award. And right now, let's go down to the sidelines, and here's Scott o. Well, Don, Rob Bresciani just looked at the touchdown and declared his speed to be about 4-9 in the 40. For the uninitiated, that's uh, very slow, but you were very effective today. Who is Rob Bresciani? He's the guy that played in the shadows today, or I should say until today, in the shadows of just about everybody on the Rough Rider roster, but today the spotlight was yours, your best day in Pro Bowl. Oh, definitely. You know, it's uh, something I've been waiting for for, for a long time, and uh, you don't get that opportunity that often, so when you get it, you got to take full advantage of it. And, uh, uh, you know, I had an extra incentive... Uh, with my life, wife back in Regina, um, you know, we just had some uh, medical problems and I dedicated this game to her before I came and, uh, you know, thank God that things worked out the way they did. Well, we're happy to hear that things have worked out and uh, certainly you could not have picked a better game to dedicate, as we have said, your best in pro ball. Now, Don put it in perspective late in the game when he said your statistics in four years of pro ball in receiving had been a total of 117 yards and you caught 160 yards today. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, uh, uh, I've always wanted a chance to start and so far in four years uh, I've basically been a backup you know the likes of Jeff Furholm and uh, Ray Elgard it's really hard to to break in because those are two great receivers and uh, you know I just have to be patient and I knew my chance would come and it came and I did the best and these were not routine catches they were difficult all of them oh uh, yeah they were you know I don't know you know I just put my hand out and, and for some reason it popped in there and uh, you know I just for some reason, I caught it. And I want to ask you this as a Regina boy. Are you living a dream playing for the Rough Riders and playing so well today? Oh, uh, definitely. That's something I grew up uh, dreaming always to be a Rough Rider. And uh, the tradition is so strong there. And, uh, you know, this is my best day ever. And every fellow who plays football in Regina dreams about it. But few realize that you have. And you made the most of your chance today. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Hey, for Rob Bresciani, with his receptions totaling 160 yards. A career game as well for quarterback Kent Austin. 29 completions and 37 attempts, 483 yards, and that is the top passing total this season in the Canadian Football League. I talked about Rob Bresciani, six receptions for 160 yards. His touchdown will probably make highlight films this year the way it bounced into his arms off Tim McRae, and he carried it for the major score. Milson Jones on the ground got those tough yards, 19 carries, 110 yards and two touchdowns and let's not overlook donald narcisse a sixth game of over 100 receiving yards and he too scored a pair of touchdowns and he made some big catches for him also coming into that open area when ken austin would look short and when they were in his zone defense he'd throw it in the hole to narcisse and he would go and get it and that touchdown catch is was outstanding calgary stampeders haven't had home field for a playoff game since 1979 and they still occupy second spot, but now just two points ahead of Saskatchewan. 25 first downs for the Rough Riders. Look at the total yards, 642 to 366. The two teams combining for over 1,000 yards in offense.
score today at McMahon Stadium in Calgary, Saskatchewan 39, Calgary 26.